Today we're at the Home Improvement Camp Cottage and we're going to be doing sheetrock. Everybody loves doing sheetrock. Actually, nobody likes doing sheetrock. But we'll show you how to do it so it's not such a big animal in the room. We're going to show you how to measure and cut for different things like around doors and electro boxes, things like that. We're going to show you how to tack it up with nails and then screw it off with screws. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over and we're going to tape it so you have a nice wall at the end. It's really good to have two people. It makes the movement so much easier. Plus, when we lift it up, it's going to help a lot. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a few nails in right where the studs are. So when we lift it up, all we have to do is reach a hammer up and tack it in. What you see here is we're lined up to the center of this layout stud here. It's eight feet right to the center of this stud, and our sheetrock is eight feet, so it's lining up nicely. What we'll do later is obviously when we fill this in, we'll have to cut to this center of the stud to let the other um, piece of sheetrock in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some nails where the studs are and where the header is over, over here, and I'm just gonna drop them down a little bit. So I can get into the studs, and that'll give me a good idea later of where the studs are. Now, and Mark's tall enough for that. I'm not. All right, so now we've just nailed this, this sheetrock up. All that is doing is just holding it, but you don't want to nail off the whole sheetrock. You'd rather screw it. Screws will not pop out later. Nails will. And when you're nailing off the sheetrock, you want to make sure the nail just goes barely past the surface of the sheetrock. Otherwise, you could end up getting it and not visible on other issue for yourself. And also, you, you have to hammer it in at least just a little bit. That way, when you're mudding your wall, you won't hit the nail head. I'll put some screws in right now. And what I want to show you is how deep you put the screws in and what happens if you go too deep or if you go too high. So. I'll be putting one right here. Now if I leave it like this, I can feel, uh, let me see here. You can feel it. And that's bad because then you won't be able to tape your wall. You'll have to go back and fix all your screws. This, with a little dimple like that, is basically how you want your screw to be. Like that is too deep. So if we put in another screw where we want it, oh, maybe too deep. I did it. Oops, I did it again. All right, so now we have one and it's just barely dimpled. You do not want to break this top sheet when you put your screws in. There are, there, this is just a normal uh, drill motor, but there are motors that are made for screwing off sheetrock. And if you're going to be doing a lot of sheetrock, it's handy to have a corded drill that is made to do sheetrock. And it will stop the drill right at the face of the uh, sheetrock and it won't go any deeper. So if you go to like any of your hardware stores and buy one of those, it will make your job a lot easier if you're doing a lot of sheetrock. If you're not, just using a regular screw, dri screw um, driver like this will work really well. And what about the rest of the uh, screws, Jack? <laughs> Let's find them. How do we find the screws? Well, we could, we could uh, 
We could, if you, if you got a really good eye, you could just follow the uh, marks on this. Sheetrock, you see all these marks. These will help you with the, uh, the alignment of the studs. Or, but Mark likes it better if he has a line. Because he likes the way things look when they're nice and straight. And for someone like me, I know exactly where the stud is because I'm not the most accurate person when it comes to screwing in, screwing in, screwing in sheetrock. I find myself off every once in a while just digging straight through. So if I have a line in front of me, I know exactly where to be and I can space them off to where they're supposed to be. And if you're not as tall as I am, and you can't go up here like this, you can always start from the bottom and do the exact same thing. And so you basically want to just line this up with the center of the stud. And if you have a step ladder, that'll, that'll help also. So I'm going to put just a few more screws in right now, and uh, then we'll move on to the next sheet. Now that we have one sheet up, we're not going to worry so much that the door isn't cut out. We'll cut that out later after we screw it all off because we don't want to start sawing on that, on that sheet rock and have it wobble a bunch because it'll mess up your, your cut. You can, you can mark it with a, uh, a utility knife and do it that way or you can just saw it out with a, um, with a drywall type saw and we'll show that to you later. But right now what I'm going to show you is how to measure for sheetrock. We have 65 and 1 8. When you're cutting sheetrock, you always subtract a quarter inch. Why? Because generally when you cut the sheetrock, it's a little bit jagged. When you break, break the board, it's not a straight line unless you have a sheetrock plane. Um, you, most people don't use those. Generally, people just cut the sheetrock. So what we'll do is we'll cut it a quarter short and then we'll put it up. We've got it. So now we're going to cut this sheetrock to fit in between this piece of sheetrock and the wall. And we said it was 65 and 1 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it at 64 and 7 eighths. I'm doing it a quarter inch short because when I break this line on the sheetrock, it's going to be rough. And some of those pieces are going to be sticking out an eighth in, an eighth out, an eighth in, eighth out, something like that. And so if you take a quarter away from it, you'll be able to put the sheetrock in nice and neatly, plus We'll put the, the machined edge against the machined edge, and we'll put the bad side against the wall. And when the sheetrock on that wall comes over, it's going to cover it up anyway. So when you do, and, and then after that, when you're taping your corner, your corner will actually be taped up nicely as well. So right now, I'm just going to put my square right on the mark. Now some people like to use their utility knife on the square. You can do that. You might move it around a little bit when you're doing it though. Now I'm just going to make a mark on this line. <sighs> Now, what, what you'll do is you'll break the sheetrock. And you're not really breaking it, but they call it breaking the sheetrock. It's just when you make a cut on one side, it's easy to snap the sheetrock off. 
And what I do is I just put my knee behind the line and I just pull and it generally pops easily. And now I'll just make a simple slice down on the inside, backside of the sheetrock. So now perhaps you can see how uneven this is. We have a big bump here and we have another bump here and, and so taking that quarter inch off is a big helper when you go to put the sheetrock up. I want to talk to you about some of the generalities of sheetrock. You know, maybe you're not the best line drawer with your knife and you don't know how deep to cut. All you're really doing is you're just breaking that paper because the paper holds the sheetrock together. So if you just, as you're cutting down through it, just put just a gentle pressure on your knife and try the best as you can to follow the line. I don't recommend you putting the sheetrock on the ground, making a mark on it, and then cutting it. If there's so much as a small stone or anything on a job site, where, or there's a nail, or there's a screw, or whatever, and you have your knee on the sheetrock, it's going to make a big, big um, pot mark on the front of your sheetrock, and you don't want that. So what we're going to do is, the other thing I want to mention t about that is that sheetrock is a dusty business, and when we start doing our, um, showing you little things like planing the side of the sheetrock and so forth, the, the dust is just kind of goes over everywhere. So it is a messy thing to do, and uh, it's just part of the business. This is one type of sheetrock plane. It's a little longer than what I'm used to, but it'll work just fine. All you do is you look for your bumps. Like I see a bump right here. You can see how the line goes over. Um, and I kind of see one here. So all you do is you just, just hit these spots. And when I said this was a dusty business, it's a dusty business. What we're going to do now is we're going to hang this second sheet of sheetrock. We're going to put nails in the stud areas just like we did last time and we're just going to hang it. So first we're going to carry it over, get it nice and tight up against the wall and what you see is it looks like it looks like it'll fit. So Grab some nails, and honestly, you don't have to put that many in. All right, lift this up. And Okay, we have the second sheet up and what I want to mention now is for nailing pattern or screwing pattern, there are different patterns. If you're doing a shower, they may want you to put more screws in, in the green board. If you're just doing a wall, generally they only want four or five screws in the, in the field, but this is the field. And on the edge, you can tighten them up a little bit more and put a few more on the edge. That just holds the edge nice and tight, so when you tape it, nothing's going to move. What I'm doing now is I'm screwing off the, the doorway, and I want to do that because I don't want the sheetrock moving around when I cut the opening out. So I'm just going to jump on that, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut out the door. I'm going to cut 
right up here and right up here and we're going to cut all the way up to the header and what we're going to do is we're going to go make a line from the top of this cut and that cut straight across. I'll take a knife, whoosh, cut that thing and I'll go on the back side just like we did with the sheetrock before and I'll cut the back side and we'll get rid of this piece of sheetrock and we'll have a doorway again. And now the sheetrock has been cut. All right, we've cut out our door and now we're going to put in the lower sheet. Generally when you're putting in your, your, your sheets of sheetrock, you always do the ceiling first. That's good to know. But on this, we're just going to give you an idea of how to hang the sheetrock. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, this sheetrock here, we're going to put it across here, and you've got to make sure that we stagger our joints. In other words, we don't want to have another joint right here because it'll, it, it will make the, uh, a good place for a nice big long crack. So basically you stagger your joints and you pull from the opposite end and you come over as far as you can with your sheet of uh, sheetrock. And, and after you do that, then you have your staggered seams and, and it'll look nice. So what you see here is eight feet comes to here. Well, we can't have our sheetrock flapping in the wind, so the next stud we go back to is here. So the center of this stud is 81. So we'll go 80 and 3 quarters and we'll flip it so the rough edge is on the uh, corner. Again, I did it at 80 and 3 quarters instead of 81, and 81 was to the center of the stud. You're, if you want to get your sheetrock done quicker, just, just take the quarter off. It makes your life a lot easier. You don't have to worry about rasps, rasping off the edges of the sheetrock. There are areas where you would like to use a rasp, like if you have a plenum and you have to get the edge really tight or something like that. Well, then a rasp works there. But in general sheetrocking, nip a quarter off of it, cut your, your board, put it up. Get as many boards up as fast as possible. That's the, the name of the game. So that's what we're going to do. OK, let's, let's hang this. Let's get it going. Chop, chop. You'll notice we have this big gap here. Well, we, we put this first sheet up at eight feet, and that four feet and four feet, doesn't that make eight feet? Well, when you build frame, framed walls, you have a 92 and a quarter stud. And what that gives you after you put your three plates on is eight foot one. That way you can lift the sheetrock off the floor, tighten it up to this sheetrock, and they do that because it just makes a cleaner finish on the floor and the baseboard covers it up and everything's fine. But, but a lot of people would look at this and say, oh, we have a problem. The other issue we have is we have an electrical box down here on this stud right here, right down from below here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure for that, for that electrical box before we hang this piece of sheetrock or we might show you one other way to do it that might be a little bit easier because if you're like me, I don't always measure it correctly when it's away from the box. So we're going to show you a way to actually measure where it is, cut it out in place. Is that okay with you, Jack? It's okay with me. If you have a zip router, that's what the, the professionals use. And what, they, what you do is you just measure 
off the floor where the box is. You make a mark on your sheetrock just so you know where it is. And then you can plunge your router in there and just go around the box. And the bit is a little bit, bit thicker than the end of the bit, so it makes a little bit bigger of a hole, and that just makes it really easy to do your, your plugs. So, but like you said, that's what the pros do. And if you're not a pro, you might find yourself plunging it, moving all over the place, having a bigger hole than you wanted. So that's for the pros. That's true. And sometimes when you measure, it's tough to measure sheetrock because you're measuring true measurements. And what do we do? We took a quarter off. So do you take a quarter off? What do you do? A lot of times what you'll do is you'll just measure off the floor before you put your sheetrock up. That's what Mark likes to do. I don't have any problem with that. If you, um, if you buy a router, they're not that expensive, $99 or something, and it'll make your life a lot easier to do when, you, when you're hanging your sheetrock. Okay, but there's, we agree. But, we there, agree. but there's more than one way to skin a cat. Exactly. This is a cat that I don't like. All right, so Jack's here supervising me because he's the professional and I'm the homeowner. So what I do is I find the edge where the box is, put a mark there, come over about two inches, put another mark here, take the tape measure, measure the bottom of the box, which is 13 and three quarters, write it down on the floor, get the top of the box, 17 and a half. So now we have we know exactly where our box is, so we can come we can put that piece of sheetrock down, come back, know exactly where the box is, and cut it out. The nice thing about some of these electrical boxes, this one particularly has a screw right here, so you can adjust, you can put it in and you can put it out. So what we'll do is before we put this piece of sheetrock up, we'll recess this box back so it's flush with the studs, so it won't get in the way of bubble or hump out and create a different type of a fit. You'll notice that there's no wires going into that box. It's just a, a box that we put there just to teach you how to cut for that box. For demonstration purposes only. Well, what I have in my hand right here is a, what you call a generic, it's called a flat bar. And it's really handy in lifting up things and obviously pulling nails, but today it's going to be a pry bar for us. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it underneath the sheetrock, slide a little board under it and step on it. Now I want to make sure that my sheetrock is all the way over and my board is right. Okay, we look good over here, we're tight here, we're tight there. We know where our studs are because we marked them. Now we have a piece of sheetrock that's sitting nicely on the wall. We have a few more pieces to get up and you're probably wondering why we haven't cut out our box yet. Generally what you do is you, you do all your sheetrock first, make sure you mark where your, your boxes are and that way you can come back all at once with one tool and just go boom, 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 boom and, and, and cut out all your little boxes.
again, the fastest way to do boxes, electrical boxes, is with a routing tool. But what we're going to do is we're just going to use the humble little drywall saw here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and mark right where Mark made his marks on the floor. So we go 13 and 3 quarters. All right, right across here. All right, so we have one line. I'm going to go 17 and a half right here and right here. All right, just connect the dots. And that's our box right in here. We know that mark mark the studs. So what I'll do is I'll just take this handy tool that we always use, come straight up from where Mark marked his first mark, make a mark, go over to where he did his second one, make a mark. That looks like uh, just a little like two and a quarter inches. That might be a little bit big, but we're pretty sure that the middle of the box is right here. So what we're going to do is just cut until we feel it. Oh, I feel it there. And it's right there. So we know how big this box is. It's this wide to here. And we go up. Oh, right to the line. And down. And we're right to our line. So all we have to do is just follow our lines. Instructions here where the screw is and so forth that you have to go around, but okay, so there's our box. Now we have our box, and all we have to do now is Cut this back just a little bit with our knives. So now I'm just trimming out on the outside of the box with my knife. That is the outside of the box. Making enough room for it to come out. All right. All right. So we've cut around the outside of the box. And now all we have to do is back this screw out. It will pull the box out to the, the flush side of the uh, drywall. And that's where we want it. That way it will protect the wires once the wires are in there. So now we're ready to tape. OK. All right. So now I'm just going to back it the uh, box out. And there we have it. An electrical box that's flush with the sheetrock. Just the way we like it. Home Improvement Camp. Have at it.